I will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we're thankful today, mighty God, for this opportunity to come into your presence, to worship the Lord our God with all that's within us, to give him the praise and the glory in all things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We pray let the Holy Ghost minister here in this house today, Lord, in Jesus' name. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Oh, the presence of the Lord.
God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we praise you. We love you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It just feels good to praise him. It feels right. Amen. Makes the devil mad. But oh, it makes God glad. He inhabits the praise of his children. Amen. Let me enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise to give him the praise and the glory in all things. Praise God. You may be seated this morning. So good to see you. Amen. If you're visiting today, make yourselves at home. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It just feels good to be in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It feels good just to be back on our feet again and uh, my wife and I have been quite been through quite an ordeal for a couple of weeks now, and and uh, I tell you, there's just nothing like being with the family of God. Amen. <laughs> nothing like being in the presence of God. Amen. Praise God. Without Him, we have no hope, but we have hope. Amen. We're two or three are gathered together. He said, "That's where I'm going to be." Amen. You have a need this morning. God's in the house. Let your faith reach out this morning. We want to continue to remember Sister Crudis, Sister Hunt, Sister Vanjie, Sister Lashonda, Brother Guzman, Brother Clyde, Brother Hobson, Gordon Winslow, Amanda Uragus, Pam Sheehan, Monica Hernandez, Minnie Collins, Ed Brown, TJ, BJ Adderley, Daniel Thomason, Pat Cunningham has cancer. And Chris, uh, UMC, they removed his toes, and uh, he's got pneumonia. That's not a good sign. And also, my mother-in-law is, we don't know if she's going to make it much longer. She's in very bad shape. Her name is Sister Mills. If we could just remember her also this morning. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Harrington family. Okay, let's remember them. Amen. Other needs this morning by the lifting of our hands. Praise God. Lift that need up to Jesus this morning. Lord, you're able. God, you're sovereign. Lord, is there anything you can't do? I thank you for healing this morning. If you needed something from the Lord, you're welcome to come. Amen. Mighty God, as we beseech the Lord this morning, God, for your mercy. 
not for works of righteousness which we have done, but because God is merciful. He is merciful. When I'm tired. God's mercy this morning.
about what you do with that box. Amen. Because when you give unto God, the Bible tells us you can't outgive Him. Amen. You cannot Amen. outgive God. You want a blessing? Make sure and pay your tithes, give your offerings. Amen. And you know, it's more than just that. Praise God. Yes, God does require 10%. Amen. But how much does he require of our worship and our praise? Amen. 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 Praise God. Our faithfulness to the things of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. So don't forget to pay your tithes and offerings. Amen. Invite somebody to church. We're going to have a great time. Amen. Well, they're getting ready. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I guess we could start an auction or something here. Amen. Is it getting there? Not yet. Okay, they're coming. So if any of you would want to view this, you're welcome to come on up to the platform here and get a little closer. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Come on. I know I've 
Man, I'm glad he meant I've been born again. Praise the Lord. He meant the Bible says in Revelation 20 and 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection of such the second death hath no power. Praise God. Amen. If you don't want two deaths, you better make sure you got two births. Amen. Praise God. If you've been born again, you don't have to worry about the white throne judgment. Amen. Praise God. When you get born again of water and of the Spirit, amen. Praise God. Amen. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Now, sometimes, amen, I can be a stickler, amen, on the word of the Lord, amen, on certain things, amen, praise God. In fact, probably all of them. But when the Bible says in John 3 and 5, verily, verily, I said unto thee that you must be born again of water, it did not say of the water. It said of water. If it said of the water, you'd have to go to Jerusalem to get baptized. Amen. You'd have to go down to the old River Jordan, amen, praise God. Hallelujah. But it said of water, amen. That means it'll work, amen, no matter where, praise God. It can be a lake, it can be a creek, it can be a river, amen. It can be a baptismal tank. It can even be a horse trough, amen, praise God. But you got to be buried, you got to go all the way under, amen. Praise the Lord. But then, amen, it picks up, it says be born again of water, and then it says of the Spirit, which tells you there's not but one true gift of the Holy Ghost, praise God. That's why it says in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Make sure you got the right spirit this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. We just saw another one. Amen. Get their sins washed away. Brother Rudy Alva. Amen. Praise God. He's been with us now for two weekends. Amen. He's back for the third weekend. Uh, he doesn't live here, amen, praise God, but we're sending him off, amen, with the greatest gift, amen, today, the remission of sins. Doesn't mean he won't come back and visit, amen, but he doesn't live here. He lives in Brownwood, Texas, amen, that's where they got, they got that barbecue place, Sister Crudis, amen, Underwoods, amen, praise God. And, uh, but anyways, amen, Brother Rudy, amen, had some questions. We were able to have a Bible study. He saw his need to be water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. This old world, amen, is getting ready to leave, amen, to wrap up. Everything's coming to an end, praise God. We're closer than a lot of people realize today. We're in the last days. We're in the last times. We're in what they call the end time. Amen. Praise God. Anybody that's not baptized correctly, amen, is not going, amen, in that meeting in the air. You're just not going to make it, praise God. you got to handle the sin question down here, amen. Nobody gets saved after the rapture, amen, uh, as far as the Gentiles are concerned, amen. When the church is raptured out of here, uh, the Bible says that God will turn back to the nation of Israel because he has a covenant with Israel out of Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 15. That covenant has never been broken, and so God is going to honor his word. He turns back to the nation of Israel. But right now, the church age is coming to a culmination. And you got to make sure that you've been born again of water and of the Spirit, amen, or you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. Now, there are some that believe that after the rapture of the church that they can still squeak by and get in, amen, praise the Lord. But there's two places of Scripture. One is found in Luke chapter 21. The other one is in the epistles written by the apostle Paul, and it talks about, amen, that the time of the Gentiles shall be fulfilled. When it says fulfilled, it means it's over. The church age, amen is going to be done. It's going to be over, praise God, with the rapture of the church. And so if you want to be saved, amen, praise God, you need to get serious about this business. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Let's magnify the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallel you don't want to take a gamble on this, praise God. You don't want to think you're saved. You need to make sure you're saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, but the preacher down the road told me, amen, that, this, that God will accept this. God will accept nothing, amen, but the truth. There's not but one plan of salvation, praise God. There's not but one water baptism. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. Titles will not work. Titles will not suffice, amen, praise the Lord. And there's some here today, you've been baptized, amen, in the titles, but you were not baptized correctly. Therefore, the blood has not washed away your sins. This is how serious a matter. Brother Rudy, praise God. Come on, let's shake his hand. Hallelujah. Come on, guys, go down there and shake his hand real quick, real quick. Praise God. Amen. Sister Cruz, why don't you sing something? You got something? Nope. Sister Torsi, you got something? Nope. Torsi's not here. Praise God. She's getting ready, amen, in the back. Praise God. Just real quick, real quick, amen. Praise God. Go over there and shake his hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is a special day. This is a special moment. Praise God. Amen. Like a bird out of prison. Put your hands together one more time. Could you clap unto the Lord? Yeah, I promise it'll help you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Children, you're dismissed to the fellowship hall on this side. Amen. Praise God. They're still back there practicing. Praise God. Amen. Getting ready. Amen. For our Christmas program next Sunday. Uh, so next Sunday, amen, we're going to have the kids up here. Amen. Doing their part. Praise God. It's going to be a good time in the Lord. Uh, look around. There's a lot of people that are missing today. Uh, the Starks family is down with the flu, from what I understand. And so you want to lift them up and pray for them. Praise God. They wouldn't have caught it if they hadn't been chasing it. Amen. Praise God. But uh, need to pray for them. Uh, Sister LaShonda, I believe, is having to work today. So there's four of them that are not here today. Uh, pray for... Um, uh, the Newfield family, amen, the family from Seminole that comes every other week, they have had some sickness in their family. They're getting over that, 
And so we lift them up and pray for them. And uh, the Nieves family is not here today for other reasons. And so we want to lift them up. Sister Jones is traveling. And so she's not here today. So there's quite a few people, amen, that are out. I want to make mention again, Brother Hunt uh, does such a tremendous job, fine job, amen, leading the service and uh, <laughs> keeping us posted, praise God. I wanted, I wanted to say something again. He's already mentioned it. Monday night prayers at 6 o'clock. Some of you are showing up. We've been having anywhere from 10 to 11 people on Monday night for prayer. Um, and somebody made mention here the other day in our time and saying, Pastor, what's happened the last three Wednesday nights? It seems like there's been a breakthrough each Wednesday night. We've had some tremendous uh, services and moves of God. And I'll tell you, I can only contribute that, that to the Monday night prayer. Praise God. Now, 10 people, amen, to 11 are showing up. Amen. Praise God. What would happen, amen, if the rest of you started showing up? There's no telling what would happen. And I realize, amen, sometimes what I say, amen, can rub you the wrong way. Praise God. Amen. But if I'm rubbing you the wrong way, turn around. Amen. Praise God. Because you can't do anything better than pray. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I believe in prayer. I don't believe we do enough prayer. Amen. But these are special times that we say, let's just get together. Let's show hell that he doesn't hold us hostage. Let's show the devil. Amen. Praise God that he doesn't have the upper hand. We come in here and we pray. Praise God. And we loose doors. We loose chains. We open up doors. Praise God. Amen. Through the power of prayer. And uh, I cannot, I can only preach. Amen. As well as the church will pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And we've got a good report. Amen. Sister, is, uh, Sister Ariani, is that right? Ariana? Anella. Okay. Sister Anella. I've got it written down on this paper. I should look at it, huh? Because I got Arnella. No? That's Ariani. That's Ariani, and you're Arnella. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I, I had, yeah, so I got you guys backwards. I hope I don't get Moses and Bethany mixed up, praise like that, praise God. But uh, she had was facing surgery; they were going to remove a cyst, amen, under her knee or at her knee, and uh, they went into surgery Thursday. And they went in there and they did two little incisions, and they couldn't find the cyst. The cyst is gone. You, you, you can say what you want to, amen, praise God, amen, but uh, I'm just telling you the, the Lord is still working, prayer still works, praise God. <laughs> amen, praise the Lord. And, and even if you don't get healed and you don't get your answer right away, it doesn't mean that God's not already moving and working on your behalf. Right, amen. amen, praise. Sometimes, amen, God allows us to go through afflictions, okay? Yeah. Before I preach, amen, let me meddle. Amen. In Psalms 34 and 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Don't let the devil ever whisper to you that when you face affliction, and don't let him tell you that that means that you are abandoned of God. That doesn't mean you're abandoned of God, amen. God allows things in our lives, amen, to prove us, test our faith, amen, praise God. Hallelujah. I still believe that God's a healer. JJ, little JJ had a birthday today. He's not with us today, so we want to remember him, pray for him. So good to see Sister Hussman here today. Glad she's doing better after her surgery. Praise God. Mary, good to see you. I'm so glad you brought your brother Rudy. Amen. I'm telling you, praise God. And Rudy, I'm proud of you for obeying the word of the Lord. Amen. Me and Brother Rudy had a good time the other day. We talked on the Lord, amen. And he saw Jesus' name, baptism. He says, he said, would you baptize me? I said, man, yeah. Praise God. He acted so nice. Now, the ones don't, don't act good, Rudy. I hold them down longer. <laughs> amen. Praise God. So good to see Brother and Sister Schulte with us today. Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's go to the word of the Lord. Amen. I'll quit. Amen. Praise God when you're tired of listening. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I probably won't go real fast this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. But um, 
I am, uh, you know, I just love God. And uh, my greatest goal in life is to please him. Amen. We're, we're not here you mean, to be popular. We're not politicians. Amen. Our musicians are not magicians. They worship the Lord. They serve God. I can't make anything happen, but I can sure get the Lord's attention. Amen. Luke chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter three sixteen. Amen. Praise God. I realize that I am kind of jumping the gun. I'm a little bit early. Uh, Linda, where's Linda? So good to see you with us today again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Linda, you're not short. Your feet touch the ground. Praise God. I like Linda. Amen. Praise God. She loves God. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Very familiar story, but I want to talk to us a little bit today. It says in verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Cyrenius, or Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto, or into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. I've got a ring up here. Amen. If it's not bothering you, it's okay. Praise God. But uh, there is a there is a, a ring. Amen. Praise God. A kind of a feedback. Amen. Make sure these mics are off. Amen. Praise God. But I believe that they are. But uh, we just got a ring. Um, 1 Timothy 3 and 16. 1 Timothy. I'm sorry. Yeah. 1 Timothy 3, 16. I got so many pages here marked. I promise not to hold you long. First Timothy 3 and verse number 16. Many of us can quote it. And without controversy, without argument, without debate. Are you ready? Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Some people never, ever understand the mysteries of God. But the church is granted access and understanding. Now watch. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Praise God. Just reading the scriptures, even already I feel better. Brother Hunt, would you pray? Sure, amen, to the church, to the world, amen, especially amen, in the sight of God. Uh, these are words, amen, that are uh, divinely inspired, amen, that God gave to the apostles and to the prophets, amen, that's Old Testament, New Testament, amen, that they wrote under divine inspiration of the Lord. Praise God, amen. Now, I realize, as I said, I'm jumping the gun, amen, praise the Lord, but next Sunday, Amen. There probably won't be any preaching. There'll be a program. Amen. There'll be some things. Amen. For the Christmas festivities. Praise the Lord. And so I just wanted to talk to us a little bit. Amen. And help us. 
because the Christmas season is but two weeks away. And it is a day that will be celebrated, amen, praise God, that's been recognized for thousands of years. It's been celebrated, amen, for many, many decades. Many will gather together, amen, at a time, amen, a festive moment, praise the Lord. The giving of gifts, amen, will exchange hands. The sharing and expression of feelings, amen, will take place. Um, families, friends, amen, will meet together, amen, praise God, during this time. Um, it's a, it's a, maybe you're going to have a special meal on that day. You might have a fireplace, and I know people, amen, that light up their fireplaces even when it's not cold out, praise God, just because they want a festive feeling, amen, uh, in the house. And some people are going to be busy with doing some singing. Maybe some will do some caroling. Uh, there's going to be cookies and hot chocolate, praise God. That's the only reason why I show up, amen, praise God. And there's going to be many other things, amen, that are going to be involved, amen, with this thing called Christmas. It's a day that's recognized more today as a holiday than it is as a holy day. Now, that's not the only time that I've ever said that, praise God. But there are special moments in time. There are events in the word of the Lord that we must give special recognition to them because God does. Can I get an amen? To some people, Christmas is just another day off from work or just a time of leisure, a time to relax. But in this 21st century, I feel that much has been lost and misplaced concerning the truth of this moment and of this day. Much has been overlooked, if not forgotten, concerning the significance, amen, of what took place. I am troubled today with the lostness of the message of the birth of Jesus Christ. Christ. I am pained with the commercialization of what people or our world today calls Christmas. And I'd like for us to understand in the next few moments, amen, what Christmas means to God. Amen? And what it means to God, it mean, needs to mean to us. I had him put up this, amen, praise God, and the title of the message, that's Christmas, praise the Lord. There's a lot of events, amen, up there, a lot of characters up there, praise God. But the uh, central theme, amen, has always been Christ. It's always about Jesus Christ, amen, praise God. And I want to help us, amen. I took a little journey last night. My wife's not even aware of this. It took some time, amen. But uh, I drove through some of the neighborhoods that are around my house and, and around him in the church, amen, praise God. And I, I drove for about 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, amen. And uh, I began to look at the displays that were on their uh, front y'all uh, excuse me, the ones they set up for Christmas, the ones that represent what they think about Christmas. And it was very disturbing to me, amen. Maybe you've never noticed it before, and maybe it's never bothered you, praise God, amen. But it reflected the condition of our world and our society. Hold on, amen. I know where I'm going. On these lawns, these homes, amen, as I drove in front of them, and I looked at the ornament on the front and the displays. I found, amen, there were reindeers and there were sleighs, amen. Even some of them had trucks and some of them had fire trucks, amen, and some of them had airplanes. Uh, there were uh, characters of minions and even penguins out there with a red hat on. There was Santa, uh, there were elves, then they had dogs that were dressed up, bears, amen, praise God, then there were Grinches, and there were gnomes, amen, gingerbread houses, candy canes. Even Mickey and Minnie made their appearance on their lawns. One house had Snoopy and Charlie Brown, amen, praise God. Then there was another house, and I thought, what in the world is that doing out here? Most of you probably don't remember, there was a movie years ago called Star Wars, and on their front lawn they had Darth Vader, Stormtroopers, and even the ugliest person I've ever seen, Yoda. Amen. And I want you to know I counted, praise God, out of 125 houses, even the displays on their lawns, there were only five that had a manger scene. 
that is less, amen, and right around 3%, praise God, of the people that had a understanding, amen, that Christmas wasn't about horses and donkeys and it wasn't about trucks and planes. It's not about elves and Grinches and gnomes, praise God. Christmas, amen, is still, amen, the story of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, maybe it doesn't bother you, and I'm not here, amen, to damn or condemn anybody that puts that on their lawn. But I feel that things have gotten out of perspective, amen. We're living in perilous times. People are forgetting, amen, what's most important. They don't realize, amen, that church, amen, is one of the things that God chose and ordained, amen, that he's going to carry home with him one day. I just want to help you to understand, only the church is going to make it in the rapture. Amen. Praise God. Many have lost the idea of Christmas. They don't know the significance of Christmas. And if we're not careful, you and I can miss and forget how wonderful the truths are that we just read this morning. We can actually omit and overlook the value, amen, that is found in our text. It's more than just a story of the past. It's more than just the birth of a child. But with it and by it, the angels recorded and said there would be great joy, tidings of great joy, and not just, amen, for that moment, but for all of time. I don't know, amen, if this moves you or not, but I'm glad, amen, that Jesus Christ came the first time. We don't want to miss what's being said in these scriptures, amen, or what's taking place. It has the deepest mystery attached to it. It has the richest mercy attached to it. It has the greatest promise and the greatest gift attached to it. It is the greatest gift known to mankind because the gift is God. And that is a gift that keeps on giving year after year after year, service after service after service. Amen. There's 4,000 years, amen, all the way to the birth of Jesus Christ from the beginning. 4,000 years of hopes and dreams, 366 prophecies and revelations. There's 39 books of the Old Testament, and all of those were attached to this one event, to this one birth. Praise God. Can you imagine three? 366 prophecies coming to pass at this moment of time. It shows us how significant this was. The prophets looked for this day. Amen. Our forefathers waited for this day. Praise God. Hey, I'm here to tell you, Christmas is not about trees and tinsel and presents and boxes. Praise God. Christmas has to do with Jesus. In fact, the fact that you and I are still celebrating Christmas today and preaching about it this morning is enough to help us realize how monumental this birth really is. Again, I'm going to read it to you because I'm going to stick to one scripture in particular. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Hear me now. Without his birth, there is no redemption. There is no reconciliation. There is no such thing, amen, as hope, amen, for anybody. There is no salvation, praise God. Without this birth, amen, there was not a Savior for all of mankind. The scripture says in the Ezekiel 22 30 God said and I sought for a man that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap and the scripture says and I found none Isaiah chapter 59 verse 16 I won't bore you amen praise God with the, the length of the verse but it simply says amen therefore my own arm brought salvation praise God God amen came in the greatest package called the womb of a virgin he boxed himself amen and wrapped it in flesh praise the Lord, and came to this earth, amen, and presented himself as the greatest gift known to mankind. It wasn't just another day in time. It wasn't just another birth on this earth. It wasn't just another baby that was being born. He was more than a babe that was wrapped in swaddling clothes. He was more than a child birthed in human flesh. He was the Savior of the world. Amen. He was Emmanuel, God with us. He was the Almighty God that came in the flesh. I'm here to tell you. And if God would show up on that day in that way, amen, it's significant for the church to understand that nothing else, amen, can take its place. 
That's why I read to you without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, for God was manifest in the flesh. We understand, those of you that have the Holy Ghost, those of you that have the revelation of the oneness of God, who Jesus Christ really is. Uh, he's not the second. He's not the third, praise God. He is the first. He's the last. He's the Alpha. He is Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the El Shaddai. He's the Elohim. He's the Rose of Sharon. He's the Lily of the Valley. He's the Bride of the morning star. Amen. Praise God. He's the almighty God. Jesus Christ came himself. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I can't help but get excited of the revelation that God has given to me. And while there are some things we may not fully comprehend and fully understand about deity being fused with humanity, we must understand that God even became a man without ceasing to be God. And there's some people, amen, that have a distorted view of who Jesus Christ really is. Uh, let me help you. He was fully God. He was fully man. And we may not comprehend it all, but I'm here to tell you, it was the greatest gift known to mankind. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Our text, amen, is a narrative of one who came, of how he came, and why he came. Somebody say, that's Christmas. That's the news, amen, the best news that the world has ever heard, amen. It's the best song the angels have ever sung, praise God. When we get to New Jerusalem, hear me now, it's not going to be the angels that's going to be rejoicing and singing. It's going to be those that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And the reason why we're going to be able to sing is because God became a man, and God put on flesh, and God went to Calvary, and God shed his blood. That's why the Bible says in Acts chapter 28, that God, amen, has redeemed us amen with his own blood praise God I want to help us praise the Lord amen praise God you and I ought to shout amen that's Christmas that's Christmas that's Christmas Amen, praise God. That's Christmas, amen, praise the Lord. It's not the festivities. It's not the holidays, amen, praise God. Now, I'm not against people getting together and giving gifts, amen. Please don't misread me, but I'm here to tell you, you can't give anything greater than the gift that God has given to us. Anybody have the Holy Ghost, amen? That's called the gift of the Holy Ghost, praise God. Anybody ever repented of your sins? It's called the gift of repentance, praise God. Anybody got faith to believe? It's called the gift of faith that operates in our lives today. Everything about God has to do with about giving. It's about the gift, amen, of God as God gave himself to us. Amen. amen. So when the angel said some things, amen, in our text, we need to listen, amen, what's coming from the voice of heaven. It brought to pass a divine intervention for a divine solution. It changed the course of human destiny. Even the calendar of time was changed from B.C. to A.D. So even today, time is now marked by this event. Amen? Everything before Christ, amen, refers to B.C., before Christ. Everything after Christ refers A.D., after Christ, praise God, amen. Now, I'm just trying to help you to understand. Isn't that wonderful that the world isn't, doesn't even understand that in their own calendar and their time factor, praise God, it all relates, amen, to the birth of Jesus Christ. Time relegates to the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. When the angel said this day, amen, born this day in the city of David, amen, was born a Savior. It was a day of all days. It was a day recorded for all of time. It was a day that was full of significance, amen. Point number one, it wasn't an accident. There were no mistakes. It didn't just happen. It wasn't circumstantial. Galatians 4 and 4 says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Amen. Praise God. So what I'm trying to tell you when he said in the fullness of time, God amen, calculated every day. God measured, amen, every day, praise God. This was not an accident. It was already on the calendar, the agenda of God. He had it already marked in the plan or in the mind of God. Amen, this day, praise God, the angels is telling us this was a day that was in the heart of God, in the mind of God, that was going to come for the people of God. Can I get an amen? 
praise God, for 4,000 years, every day from Adam on pointed to this very day. The Bible speaks of the first Adam, and then it speaks of the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, praise God, amen, is the central figure of the entire Word of God, amen. Everything revolves about around Him. The Bible says that in all things that He might have the preeminence, amen. If you're going to pray to someone, you need to pray to someone that counts. His name is Jesus, praise God. You need a prayer answered. You need a, a healing. You need a miracle. You need something. You got a need presented to the Lord, praise God, because He has come, amen. He can hear our cry, meet our needs, answer, amen, our questions. I want to help us, praise God. Think about it. For 4,000 years, somebody say 4,000 years. Some of you can't count that high unless you pull off your shoes. Somebody say 4,000 years. I'm trying to drive a point home. For 4,000 years, every day awaited this one day. Every one of those days marked him in, in the past and in history led to this very present day. That's 4,000 years of days and weeks, 4,000 years of months and days, uh, and each one looking for a this day of Scripture, waiting for a this day of promise, looking for a this day of prophecy. Praise God. Now, I'm going to get way out there on a limb, amen, and I might just not, not get it totally exactly the way you like it, praise God. But I'm here to tell you, from the first day, amen, that God began to work on the face of the earth, amen, there was a day for a thousand years that every day would progress to that day. Every day was put in divine order of God. That's why it wasn't an accident, praise God. That's why it wasn't a mistake. You don't realize, amen, when you read the Old Testament, it was leading us, amen, to the day of the birth of Jesus Christ. That's why the angel said, this day in the city of David is born a Savior. That word, this day, amen, was telling us how significant the day was. Amen. Praise God. Then I like this part. For unto you is born this day. I told you I'm going to spend some time on this verse. Amen. Somebody say born. Again, 4,000 years of births and deliveries. 4,000 years of babies after babies. Child after child. Family after family. Each one of them leading us to this day. Because even Jesus Christ, amen, praise God, had an ancestry as far as the human flesh was. Can I get an amen? amen. So on this day, man, it is marked as the day of all days. Now you and I, amen, are thinking ahead. Amen, what about Calvary? Never would have been a Calvary. Had not there been a birth of Jesus Christ. Well, what about the resurrection? Never would have been a resurrection had not been there an incarnation, praise God. What about the rapture of the church, amen? Without Jesus, you're not going. Can I get an amen, praise God? Everything about the word of the Lord, the ascension, the millennial reign, the rapture, I've got it down in my notes. We'll get there in a minute, praise God. But everything hinged upon this day. Until God robed himself in flesh, man was hopelessly lost. Man, amen, was headed to a devil's hell. We've got to understand, praise God, this is the greatest event, amen, known to mankind today, amen. And that's why I said that's Christmas. I'm tired, amen, of seeing all kinds of different characters, cartoons characters, amen, and somehow people are painting up. That's what Christmas is about. That's not Christmas. Christmas takes us back to the manger scene. Christmas takes us back to the birth of Christ. Christmas has to do with God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Amen. Somebody say, that's Christmas. Come on, say it with feeling. That's Christmas. Praise God. It was a great mystery that produced a great miracle. Amen, that had a great birth, that brought a great blessing. That's Christmas. Again, Luke 2 and 11, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And I realize I'm spending a lot of time on one verse, but this one verse, amen, cannot be dismissed nor overlooked. It's unprecedented in its worth and its value. It's unprecedented unpre in revelation and illumination if you ever get the picture. The story has no end. The story has no end. Amen. I already tried it. From the manger, there's the cross. 
From the cross, there's an empty tomb. From the empty tomb, there's an ascension. From the ascension, there's the upper room. From the upper room, there's the church. From the church, there's the rapture. From the rapture, there's the millennial reign. From the millennial reign, there's New Jerusalem. From New Jerusalem, there's life forevermore. Praise God. That's the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. It starts with Jesus. It ends with Jesus. Praise God. We shall live and reign with him forevermore. It's a story that goes on and on and on. Amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. So when he said, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. I'm taking this verse. I'm, 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 I'm defining it. I'm picking it apart, praise God, so to speak. Amen. When the angel said, which is Christ the Lord, he said something that the Jew could grasp. He said something they could get a hold of. And we need to remember and understand that the one supreme thought that possessed the mind of the Jew was that of the Messiah. Somebody say the Messiah. They looked for his coming for 4,000 years. They waited for his appearance for 4,000 years. Everything, amen, that they thought, that they looked for, that they breathed was about the Messiah. They searched the scriptures. They matched prophecy with prophecy. Their hopes, their desires, amen, and their, their expressions all awaited, amen, the fact of the appearance of the Messiah. They couldn't wait. 4,000 years, they're looking for the Christ. 4,000 years. Years, they're looking for the anointed one. 4,000 years, they're waiting, praise God, for the Messiah. And Jesus Christ is born on this day. And this is the day they were looking for. And this is the day we're thankful for. And this is the day, amen, we worship for. Amen. Praise God. When that angel said, which is Christ the Lord, all of a sudden something, amen, came to light in the Jewish mind. Amen. Their hearts and their minds said, here is the child that's born and the son that is given in Isaiah 9 and 6. Amen. Praise God. One of the most beautiful prophecies, amen, in the Old Testament and revelations of who that, who that child would be. Most of you can quote it. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Amen. And the, yeah, and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, amen, and of his government there shall be no end, amen. Notice, no end. There's no end to Christ. There's no end to this story. There's no end, amen, to the powerful birth of Jesus Christ. The reason why I say that, amen, the same thing that happened on that day happens to the church in the upper room, amen. It was Christ in them, the hope of glory, praise God. God is still pouring out the Holy Ghost. It's still going to take the Holy Ghost to get you out of here, amen, praise God. Amen. Praise God. I don't want to lose my thought, amen, praise God. But in Isaiah 9 and 6, are you ready? Let's break it down. For unto us a child is born, amen. There's the flesh part. Unto us a son is given. There's the deity part, praise God. Flesh and deity were fused together, but it didn't change the fact of who this was. That's why he's called Counselor, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, praise the Lord. Just because God came packaged in flesh, amen, did not change the fact of who he was. God became a man without ceasing to be God. The creator became the creature without ceasing to be the creator. Can I get an amen? The father put on flesh but never ceased to be the father. Amen. 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 Praise God. The Christmas story means so much to me. Praise God. And I'm troubled today, amen, in the lostness of the message. Amen. So, amen, to the Jewish mind, when he, the angel said, which is Christ the Lord, amen, he said, man, that's Isaiah 9 and 6. That's that child-born son given. He said, that's Shiloh, Genesis 49 and 10, that is to come. They said, hey, this is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. From Exodus chapter uh, 12, amen, praise God. And also we find it in John 1 and 29. Here is the Elohim who will lead captivity captive. Lead, read Isaiah chapter, chapter 61 and verse number 1. It mirrors, amen, with Luke chapter 4 and verse number 18, praise God. That was their Messiah. They searched the scriptures, amen. They put prophecy with prophecy. They couldn't wait for the Messiah to come. And the angel shows up, praise God. 
John says, this day is born in the city of David, a Savior, watch, which is Christ the Lord. Their ears perked up. Christ means Messiah. Christ means anointed one. Amen. And when they heard that, they said, hey, this is something that is needed. This is something that's important. This is something we've been looking for. This is something we've longed for. Amen. Praise God. And I can't let this one go. Genesis 3 and 15. It was the first promise of God. Amen. Praise God. Without condition. Amen. A lot of the promises of God are conditional. If you'll believe, if you'll obey, if you'll do this, amen, God will do this, praise God. This is the one promise, get it for me, Genesis 3 and verse number 15, praise God. Amen, it is a promise that is 4,000 years old, amen, and the Jews, amen, stood on this one promise, that there was going to come, amen, a prophet, there was going to come a Messiah, the anointed one. Are you ready? Praise God. Anybody got it, Luke? I'm sorry. Genesis 3 and 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. This is God speaking, amen, praise God, to his children, to the church, praise God, to Adam and Eve. Look what he's going to do. Satan deceived them in the beginning, but look what God is going to do throughout, amen. I'm going to put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. Go ahead and read. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So when they heard the prophetic word and the message of the angel saying, this is the Christ or Christ the Lord, praise God, in their mind they were able to drift back to this prophetic verse, amen, to this great, amen, wonderful promise of God. Now hear me now. And they said, wait a minute. This is the day? This child is the one, praise God? You mean he's going to be the head crusher? You mean he's going to be the Satan defeater? You mean this is the one, praise God, that's going to take away our sins? This is the one, praise God, of the Savior of the world. Amen. Church, I'm here to tell you, they looked, amen, for the Messiah to come. And on this day, amen, it held such value and worth to them because 4,000 years of prophecy and promise came to pass. Amen. Born, 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 born in a stable of a virgin in Bethlehem. Born a Savior this day. Somebody say amen. amen. That's how he would come into the world. This is how he would redeem mankind. It's how he would defeat Satan. It's how he would save you and me. The ancient of days became the infant of days, praise God. Now, I, the Lord just quickened me with something, praise God. We don't know the exact day of his birth, amen, praise God. I realize we are under the Gregorian calendar, amen, and they have set aside December the 25th as the day recognized as the birth of Jesus Christ. That's not the exact day that he was born. If you go back, amen, into Jewish theology and history, amen, you will find out it was more likely, amen, in the springtime, praise God, perhaps around March or April, amen, but it's not, amen, praise God, uh, that's not what's important. What's important is the day he was born, amen, praise God, and that who was born and why he was born. We've got to get to the place to understand, praise God, we can't sit here and debate, uh, amen, over a day in time. We've got to make sure that that day happens in our lives. And we don't forget the event. And we don't forget even the power that is recorded in the scriptures concerning that beautiful and wonderful birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. I'm doing the best I can, praise God. We're not up here trying to give you a Charlie Brown special. We're not here to bring in Snoopy. We're here in to bring in Christmas, praise God. Yeah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Let me give you a prophecy, Micah 5 and 2. But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, thou, be, though thou be little among thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings have been from of old, from everlasting. Amen. And so the prophet Micah, who's known as a minor prophet, praise the Lord, be very careful, amen, how you treat them. Amen. Because their understanding of the revelation was not minor. It just means they didn't write as much, praise God, in their books, amen. But the revelation is most powerful, praise God. He says the one that's going to be born on that day, amen, praise God, is the one who is from everlasting, amen, who has been from of old. You see that scripture in Luke 2 and 11 is one that speaks to the Jew and the Gentile. 
It's that which has come to pass, which has been made known to us, that makes Christmas Christmas, because it's got Jesus Christ in it. You can't have Christmas without Christ. We said it the other night. You can't spell Christmas without Christ. Do you understand, amen, just a few years back, amen, it, it just stretched across the nation, amen, and they thought they could shorten the holiday and put X must, amen. Praise God, amen. Church, we still need to read it right, we still need to spell it right, and we still need to preach it right. It was a way for the world, amen, to diminish, praise God, this very special and wonderful event. Amen, trying to secularize it, trying to commercialize it, amen, praise God. Trying to get people, amen, off of the thought of God. That's what's happening in our educational systems today. That's what's happening in our political arena today. That's what's happening in our government all across the world. They want to move God out. Church, I'm here to tell you, I'm moving God back in. I'm preaching on that's Christmas, praise God. This is what's real. This is what we got to have. We got to have Jesus Christ, praise God. Let me say amen. I'm nearly out of time, praise God, amen, but I'm here to tell you there's some things that you and I need to grasp. Church, we don't need to know, we, we need to know more than just how he came, but why he came. Do you know why Jesus came to this earth? Thank you. Thank you, brother. Amen. Luke 19 and 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is, which is, which is lost. He didn't come to save that which was saved or thought they were saved. Every man was lost. Every man was born in sin. Every man was shaping in iniquity. Praise God. Amen. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, you're still in sin. Amen. You have the nature of sin. Amen. You have that old Adamic nature. Are you ready? Romans 5 and 12. For by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so that death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Are you ready? Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Are you ready? Romans 3 and 10. There is none righteous, no, not one. Praise God. Are you ready? Isaiah 64 and verse number 6. Our righteous as filthy rags in the sight of God. Amen. So I'm here to tell you, through that beautiful birth, praise God, we got a beautiful plan of salvation. Praise the Lord. Lord. Through that blood, amen, that was shed at Calvary, that blood can now be applied. Your sins can now be washed away. You don't have to leave this world a sinner. You can leave this world a saint with God. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Why did he come? Because from the fall of Adam came the tragedy of transgression. Man was on a pathway of destruction. Man was on a collision course, amen, with doom and despair. The curse of sin and death affected and infected the entire human race. God's masterpiece, the crowning work of his glory, was now disgraced and distanced by sin. you got to understand this. For 4,000 years, amen, man suffered and man died. 4,000 years, sin ruled and reigned on planet Earth. For 4,000 years, man was without hope and without God. Amen. Please hear me. And God put on a rescue mission that would rec reconcile man back to him, that would atone for every sin that was ever committed, that would pay the ultimate price, that would give the ultimate gift. You're not hearing me, praise God. That's what Christmas is all about, so that you and I could be saved. Amen. Come on, musicians. I'm out of time. Praise God. So many scriptures I had here. So the mystery of incarnation. Remember I read to you in 1 Timothy 3 and 16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. What that saying is, who was that that was born? Who was that, amen, that came on that day? It was Jesus Christ. It was God manifest in the flesh. Let's read it. 1 Timothy 3 and 16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Watch. For God was manifest in the flesh. I'm trying to end this. That's why, men, the Bible called him Emmanuel in Isaiah 7 and 14 and Matthew 1 and 23. For it says, amen, praise God, that he shall be called Emmanuel being interpreted. That is God with us. 
And so on that day when that child was born, and the Jews and the historians and the ancestors and all of the prophets, amen, waited for this day for the Messiah to come. Amen. They understood as in Isaiah 7 and 14 in Matthew chapter 1 when it called him Emmanuel. Praise God. And on that day when he was born, they called Emmanuel Jesus. He's God with us. Could we all stand? That's Christmas. That's Christmas. That's Christmas. Praise God. It's not Santa. It's not the elves. Amen. Praise God. Are you ready? It's not Mickey. It's not Minnie. Amen. It's not all of these characters, amen, that you see on the lawn that has nothing to do, amen, with Christmas. That's Christmas. That's what Christmas is all about. Praise God. Let's sing before the Lord. God Praise sent God. his son. Amen. 4,000 years, Rudy. 4,000 years. 4,000 years. And the Bible brings us to a scene that is most important. It starts off in verse 1. During the reign of Caesar Augustus, there was a taxation. Amen. Praise God. And through that taxation, watch, you got a picture and there's a man and there's a woman, and she's greatly impregnated. She is pregnant, amen. Her time, amen, is coming to pass. They're traveling, amen, praise God, from Nazareth to Jerusalem. And this man is leading a donkey, and there's a girl that's sitting on the top of that donkey, and she is expected to give birth to a child. And you watch them as they enter into the city, 
and they're going, amen, looking for a place, amen, in which to have this miracle child. And people are watching, amen, praise God. And I can see a person saying, where are they going? And I can see the prophet on the other side, amen, saying, I know where they're going. They're fixing to have Christmas. Let's put our hands together. Let's thank the Lord. Praise God. Amen. So I want you to have your Christmas. I want you to have the same Christmas they had, and it has to do with the Christ child. Jesus Christ must be born again in you. Put your hands together one last time. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Let's not forget, amen, today, would you please pray? Monday night prayer, somebody say 6 o'clock. Come on, drag yourself in here. Praise God, amen. Six o'clock prayer, praise God, amen. Hey, amen, if you'll come and pray, we can have better services. Amen. You're dismissed in the love of Jesus. Shake somebody.